Hi, I'm Bob Wilcutt, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of Wilcutt guitars. I'm originally from Washington, D.C., had great supportive parents. There I am at the 64 World's Fair. They even let me grow my hair long. Thanks, Mom. But I always really wanted to play electric guitar. At the time period, uh, there's a lot of exciting music going on. Influences from Chet Atkins, The Beatles. George Harrison liked Chet Atkins too. But I always liked playing for the girls and the ladies. My early bands were folk oriented. There's the Skokie Chords 4. We had a lot of fun. Being in DC, we got to play for embassy parties private things, um, even some radio shows. That was the era of Peter, Paul, and Mary, and folk was king. And we thought we would be immortalized with plaster masks. We knew we were going to be famous. Well, rock started coming on stronger, so we formed the quotations. There's the red guitar I always dreamed about. You had to look the part, too. And of course, practicing in basements was the, uh, the thing to do. My dreams all come true. We added uh, another singers. Went through a couple singers, actually. We got recognition, it turned into the curfew, and we started backing some bigger groups like the Animals and Chad and Jeremy. We had a top 10 record uh, produced by New York, Guy Leonard Schwab Productions. Once again, we thought we were going to be famous. Well, I went to UK in 66 and met these crazy hippies that were doing some records. And I helped write and play on Psychedelic Illusion, which was a hit locally. And then we started to do an album. And that was going pretty good. We went to Washington, D.C., traveling in a hearse, <laughs> carrying the equipment in us. And we played shows down there. We played with the Vanilla Fudge and Neil Diamond and some other people. We got recognition. Sixty-eight, after taking the tour in DC with the band, I came back to UK and started fixing up antique instruments I'd find at flea markets. Um, I used to buy the parts from Fred Moore Music, and one day Freddie said, what are you doing with all these parts? And I said, I was fixing up old stuff, and he said, well, I have this whole room of trade-ins. Would you fix these up for me? So I worked all night, uh, got back the next day, and he said, you're hired. He gave me space in his basement. Uh, we did this really cool repair shop down there, and had a lot of famous people like Jerry Douglas, Tony Rice, Ricky Skaggs. A lot of cool people would come and just hang out. The shop was pretty neat at that time. Just a nice warm environment to come down and play and talk and enjoy the music world. That's Ann Sheen who did the inlay work. We would never turn down a job, so somebody wanted a custom-made auto harp. So sure enough, I jumped in and did it. Uh, Schechter uh, found us as being a really cool custom shop and we became their East Coast custom shop, built cool stuff. The, the bands got more rock oriented there in with Plexi Marshall. The Hatfield clan 
was a vintage blues band, did Muddy Waters, Howling Wolf stuff. I got back into soul music for a short length of time with the Oxford Circle. Then B.W. Cab, that was the hot band. We played every fraternity, every sorority at EKU and UK every semester. Plus, you know, Center College and weddings, all kinds of stuff. We were playing all the time. We had our own truck, big PA system for the time. One of the uh, bell bottom <laughs> promo pictures with the lute. Psychedelics, wild shows everywhere. The Mag 7 was another variation doing soul music and magnetics. In 79, we found the building at 419 Rosemont. It's an old grocery store built in 1926. And I fixed it up inside, just had a little corner section. Eventually took over the whole building. It was in pretty bad shape, but I had to do a battle with the zoning commission to enable me to build onto the back, and at that time, fix everything else, the siding, the drainage. There's Chuck it Air. We did a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> Craziness. Well, keyboards were getting bigger than guitars, and uh, we got into the keyboard thing. Marshalls were big at the time, the whole British amp thing. But guitars were always the main focus. There's the famous fender wall that Eddie Van Halen wanted to see when he came to town. And he came in and played on some stuff and bought a few things. The antique showcases around. Every square inch was filled with guitars. And in the back we were building and repairing. The little corner there where we had the strings, that was the big retail area. And there's the building with the extension on the back. Guitars everywhere. Every square inch I could put a guitar. There was no internet, so we put them everywhere. The green room upstairs, great acoustics in there. Taylor room. Upstairs warehouse, always full. Had a lot of Gibsons at this period and always playing in bands the whole time. The Stephanie Rose Band played Eastern Kentucky a lot. That's at the downtown library. I think it's 4th of July. Scarlet was a more serious country band with Terry Halp as the lead singer. Then I took a job playing bass with Larry Redman. I said, Halls at the River. We also played a lot of clubs in Louisville. The Drop Top was a top 40 band. And the whole time I was playing in bands, I kept the business going. And this is with Logan Lee and the Lie. We did modern country and some classic rock. Played all the time with that band too. Then I got into the Sensations. Ran sound for him for a while, and then got the job as a guitar player. It was a party band. We'd throw beach balls out front in the crowd, and frisbees, and everything was danceable. Just a fun thing. Well, in 2000, internet hit, and we had to either get out or get it with it. So we went with it and grew like crazy ever since. We were one of the first 
guitar websites out there. I actually started in 98, got serious around 2000. And then we got the 406 building and we did Lesson Academy upstairs for a while, but then we eventually needed all the space, so we took over the whole building. And the museum was bigger. And then it got smaller because we needed the back space for warehousing. Vendors coming in by the pallet load constantly. And I've been really lucky to have wonderful articles written about me all through the years. Free advertising, which is always good. It's always been very positive, too. We've had fun events here from Taylor, Epiphone, there's Fender Custom Shop, and the PRS Experience events. We had tables there. Gibson, we used to do a lot with them. And Martin's been very good to us. There's Tony McManus. And this great event we did with Paul Reed Smith, Howard Lease, and David Grissom, all playing in the same place. That, that was incredible. I want to thank all the people who've helped me throughout the years. There have been employees, business associates, friends, customers, band members, oh, just, just everybody. And it's all come together to make Wilkett Guitars what it is today. Uh, we're so thankful for everything. I've been totally blessed, and thank you all. Good night. That's